Hi, I'm a field applications engineer for LDRA, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the LDRA productivity package for consumer devices, and more specifically, how we can leverage this productivity package to ensure that our code is safe, secure, and well-tested in an environment that actually makes sense for our application. You'll notice that our consumer devices productivity package doesn't have any overarching standard associated with it, and that's for a very good reason. Consumer devices typically have extremely broad applications across multiple sectors, and they'll have various processors associated with them. This could be anything from a cell phone to an action camera to a smart home appliance like a washing machine or a fridge. All of these devices need to have some sort of embedded chip and need to be connected to the internet. In some cases with some of these devices, a bug could cause an injury or bodily harm to the user, and we definitely don't want that. As consumer devices are also becoming more and more connected, your consumer data can be extremely vulnerable to bad actors if it's not stored and secured properly. With all this being said, what this means is that we need to test our code to make sure that we have no dead ends and no possible bugs, and we also need to take a look at our software security and make sure that it's up to the standard that we set for ourselves. Luckily for us, the LDRA productivity package for consumer devices has a comprehensive set of tools to meet any security and testing requirement for any embedded project. And we're able to do that through our extensive list of target license packages or TLPs. These will allow you to connect to whatever embedded chip you plan on testing for. And that way you can simulate your project in a realistic environment. Also, having all of these solutions under one set of tools will help you to internally standardize your documentation, streamline your time to compliance with any standards, and ultimately save you money by saving you time. So let's jump into the LDRA productivity package that we have here, and we'll take a look at how some of these features work. The first thing that we'll want to do inside of our productivity package is to import all of our files and run a static analysis against the coding standard that we select. In my case, I'll choose CWE, and I've actually already ran the static analysis, so we can take a look at the code review right here. This is going to show us all of our CWE violations, and it's going to allow us to double click on any of these violations in order to open up that piece of code at the line where the violation occurs. This is very handy for fixing any kinds of violations you might find. I can simply change this to correct the violation, save it, and close it, and rerun my static analysis to get rid of this violation. If I want to exclude any kind of violation, I may want to, for example, exclude one of these informational rules. I can do that very simply by right-clicking, clicking on violation exclusions, and choosing how I would like to exclude that violation. In this case, I'll just exclude the individual violation, and we can see that it's gone away. If I click on show violations excluded, we can see that it is grayed out here. And this will also show up in our reports later on when we want to document this. If I'd like to see this code review in a report format, I'll just right click on my set name and click on view code review report. This will open up an HTML code review report for my set. And it's going to list every single possible violation for my standard, as well as how many times I have violated each of those standards. And if I scroll down a little bit, here, we can see our violation exclusion summary. This is going to tell us all of the violations that we have excluded from our code review. The next thing we'll want to do with our project is likely to run a dynamic analysis to test all of the different paths through our code. To do that, I'll just click on the dynamic analysis button here and click run. This is going to run my project on the command line because that's how I have it set up to run on the host. If I wanted to run this on an embedded board, you could purchase what's called a target license package or TLP to connect to whatever embedded board or simulator you'd like to use. With our dynamic analysis run, I can now right click on my set name here 
and open up the code coverage tab, which will show me how much code coverage I've obtained on the current run, as well as the percentage change. If I were to run this again with different inputs, we would get different amounts of coverage. Another thing to note that's very important for consumer device projects is to look at security-based reports that will show you any security weaknesses and vulnerabilities that might be lurking within your code in an area that you just don't see. In order to get to these security reports in LDRA, we'll just go to our TV reports button up top. And from here, I'll scroll down in my presets tab all the way until I see the security reports option. We can double click on this to open up the security reports in an HTML window, and it will give us a few different reports to take a look at. The first one is going to be the security weakness overview report. This is going to show us our most common weaknesses and it will organize them by file as well to show us where they're located. All of the purple text is hyperlinked, so I can click on this to get a better description of what I'm looking for. And we can also see the summary by file to take a look at which files are the most important ones for us to take a look at. Going down the list, we also have the security audit report, which is going to show us our mainly our key areas by cyclomatic complexity. This is going to show us the number of paths that there are physically through our code, and therefore the number of test cases that we'll have to use later on when unit testing. Going down the list, we have the security review report, which is going to show us our CWE and cert rules slash weaknesses divided up by category, and this will show us how many they have, as well as if we click on the hyperlink, it will actually show us the line number associated with them, which is very, very handy to know. The last section to take a look at is the taint analysis section, and this is going to tell us all of our taint sources where a malicious actor could potentially inject some harmful code into your software, and taint sinks, which are locations where a harmful bad actor could execute that injected code. The last thing that we might want to do with our code is to take this code coverage that we've obtained from our dynamic analysis and build off of it through unit testing. This will allow us to get every single nook and cranny of our code and make sure that we reach 100% coverage. To do this, I'll open up TB Run by clicking Start TB Run interactively here. TB Run is LDRA's unit testing software. And if I create a sequence name here, let's call it UT underscore demo. And once I switch everything over to white box, we can see our combined coverage runs from before that we've ran. Now that we have our coverage and our code pulled over into TB run, I can start thinking about creating and running some test cases. So for me, I want to test this function user interface parse, and I've imported a set of five test cases here that when run should give us a full 100% coverage on this function. So if I run those here, we'll see that happens. We can now see that our test cases have all passed here, which is great. However, we are still missing some statement and branch decision coverage. We've increased our MCDC coverage to 100%, which is fantastic. These MCDC test cases tend to be very difficult to get 100% coverage on. But our statement coverage and our branch coverage still needs some work, so we can go back and fix this to gain 100% coverage. Being able to do this and having the flexibility to do this on not just the host machine, but also on any embedded chip that you need just exemplifies the flexibility of LDRA and our tool suite. Thanks for watching my short presentation on the LDRA productivity package for consumer devices. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at LDRA.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more great videos just like this one. Thanks and have a nice day.